Hi everyone, I'm Paul with Madcap Software. I'm gonna talk in this video about layout modes in Madcap Flare. And this is something that's sort of unique to the XML editor in Flare. And it really has to do with the fact that, look, you can have all different kinds of settings and different outputs, but the same source files. So when you're working in the editor, how can you maybe change the editor so that it is showing you things that are really particular to one output or another. That's what we're gonna do in this video. So I got a few topics open here in the XML editor. And uh, what I'm talking about are these things up here in this toolbar, this layout dropdown, this medium dropdown, and this page layout dropdown. So these all kind of work together. And I actually talk about this stuff in a in another movie called Layout Resizer. And the Layout Resizer actually has to do with this little button down here, and it opens up this slider thing. And that works with these, but that's in a different video. And the layout modes, uh, they actually also work with the responsive layouts that I had mentioned uh, in the XML editor video. So they work with those other things, but these kind of stand alone. They're their own thing. So what are, we talk what are we talking about here? Well, okay, let's start with the first dropdown, layout. So you click this and you look at this and uh, web layout, just trying to get the hover off of there, web layout, web layout tablet, web layout mobile, and print layout. And then there's a couple of other options down below. We're really concerned about the ones up on top there, the web layouts and the print layouts. So if you aren't familiar with... Uh, media queries, and you might wanna check out, you should check out the video that I have on that in the um, styles video series, because these kind of get to the heart of that, this, this tablet and this mobile layout. So it has to do with the fact that people can look at your online output. They could look at it on a really large screen, which would be web layout. They could look at it on tablets, such as uh, an iPad or a, um, on a smaller screen, a smartphone, all right? So this lets you switch to these different layouts. So by default, it's showing you what the output, what the topic is gonna look like, what this content file is gonna look like if you're on a big screen, on a big old monitor, all right? But then you might want to know, hey, what if somebody's looking at this on a smartphone or on an iPad? What's it gonna look like then? And then there's print layout because it's not just online output, but you could have online output and print layout from the same source files. And so print layout, that ties in what are called page layout files, which are here in your uh, content explorer under resources. And there they are. And these are just files that you can put together that let you configure how pages are going to look in your print output, the size and the margins and the and the uh, page numbers and you know things like that, headers, footers. All right, so this is allowing you to switch to these different looks. So if I switch to tablet mode, what happened here is you didn't see much different. Now you do see this red right here, which I'm going to get to in a minute. But the other thing you saw was this, you got this scroll bar because what happened was it kicked in the breakpoint for how wide uh, a smartphone or how, how, how wide the tablet is. And this is set in your uh, target, right? For online output. So let's open that up. So you get this open and in this particular target, which is an HTML5 one, you come down here on the skin tab and you see tablet breakpoint, mobile breakpoint. So the idea is when you're looking at this on a large screen, it's gonna use that web layout until you get down to 1279 pixels of width, then the tablet layout kicks in. Then you go smaller and smaller to 767 and the mobile layout kicks in, all right? So that's what we're talking about here. So that changed as soon as I selected that. Now, if I go to mobile, that again is gonna change and you see the, the color of the heading is, is different. But the other thing I wanna point out is look at the width here. That 
went uh, that 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 came down quite a bit. So when you're looking at um, on a big smartphone at port in a landscape, this is supposed to fit in here nicely. This this content, so it, it just got narrower. All right, and then I could select print output, and all of a sudden it's completely different. Now you're looking at a page, and you got your content in here. All right, and you see the headers and the footers and all of that stuff. So you're just seeing it in, in a different way. All right, let's go back to web layout. So the web layout, this drop down actually works. It's tied in really nicely with this one, the medium. And again, I, I mentioned media queries. There's mediums and media queries, and you should check those videos out in the styles series uh, because this is allowing you, the mediums allow you to set um, different styles depending on the target. You might want a font to be a certain size in one target, in one output, and a different size in another one. You, you can control that nicely with style sheet mediums. And then there's media queries, which are similar. They're sort of related. And that's for things like mobile and tablet. And so you have, can have different styles that kick in, not when the target is different, but when the width of the screen or something about the output, the, the, it's usually the width of the screen, but it could be other things like the resolution, things like that. And so this, you can have different styles. Well, this is set up because most of the time people who are looking at something on a large device, you wanna use the medium default in your style sheet. Just that's kind of your base set of styles. But when you are looking at something in tablet view, this switches over automatically to tablet media query. And that's why you see the red here because in the style sheet, before I started this video, I've got this H1 that's in kind of blue. And to illustrate the fact that the styles are different in tablet, in the tablet media query in my style sheet, I set the H1 to be red. So as soon as that kicks in, now I'm looking at the tablet media query, that, that, um, that style setting, which is red, now you're seeing that. And once I select mobile, all right, now this changes to mo multiple. And the reason it changes to multiple is because it's, it's actually the, the mobile size, the smallest size is actually inheriting things from the tablet. But if there's a conflict like there is here where the H1 is green in the, the mobile setting and tablet said it was red, well, mobile wins. And uh, so it's gonna show green. But let's say that the paragraphs were purple of all things, uh, but it was only set in tablet, but not in mobile, then it would they would be purple in here. But the idea is that this is tied to this, although you can override it because all you're doing is changing how things look in the editor. You're not changing the output at all. So I could take out the mobile one right here, and now it's using the tablet and it's red, even though it's a mobile layout and it's, it's narrower, right? So you can just play with things in here if you want. All right, so, uh, and it's the same thing when you select print. Now it's going to automatically point to the print medium because uh, a lot of times people want different style settings for their print output than they do for online. So it just kind of goes with that. These, are, these settings are just kind of married to one another. All right, so the page layout drop down that really only is enabled when you are in print layout mode. If I go back to web layout mode, it's disabled because the page layouts are these things that I showed you over here. And in this uh, one, in this particular project, I just have two. Uh, I've got chapters and I've got front matter and it might help for you to see the output actually for this. So let's open up one of these uh, Let's re let's generate this output. This is for uh, student version of this e-learning project, and it's a PDF. And so once we open it, you're going to see what the different page layouts are. Oops, it opened up over here. There we go. Let's do this, and let's uh, get this over here. Okay, yeah, that's fine. All right, so we've got. Um, this is the first page right here of this PDF. And you can see that's the title page and it's got a certain look and feel. 
And as you go down, all right, now here is the TOC. This is front matter, the title and the TOC. At least that's this is how this one is set up. And so it's got, this one has some decoration stuff in it and a background color. And this has, all right, this is holding the TOC and it doesn't have a header, but it's got a footer and it's got certain margins in place. And then you come down here and this is the regular chapters. And so uh, you, the, you just plop the main topic content in here and it's got its own footers down here with um, the, the re repeats, the headings and it has the page numbers and so on. So it's actually a pretty simple setup. I don't really have a lot going on here with page layouts. I just got um, my uh, front matter in here and it's got my two pages in it, the title page and the normal, which is I'm using to show the TOCs. And then I've got chapters in here and it's just one page in there and it's very, very, very simple. Now I've got other page layouts in my actual project. I got lots of them. And the configurations uh, is uh, more complex than that. For example, you might have um, regular chapters where the first page the heading starts halfway down on the page. And then the other pages, they, you know, the content is further up, is, is higher up there. Um, or you might have uh, a wider left margin on some pages than other pages. So that's what page layouts control. So when you're looking at a, um, a, a topic and you're thinking about print output, how's it, how's it look in print output? If you come in here and select print, so it shows you that and it goes to pr print, the print media, print medium. And now you have control over what's shown here. You can select the uh, page layout. And, and because chapters alphabetically comes first, it's actually showing this. This, again, this is a very simple PDF. So this actually works really nicely because I'm thinking, oh yeah, drop downs, that's part of the regular chapter. And so I can see exactly what's happening, where the content is. And if I had an image in here, like below this, and it was too big, so it got pushed down to the next page, well, maybe I could resize the image to get it up in this space. That's why this sort of thing can be helpful in here. But if I uh, switch the page layout to front matter, let's go look at the title. This is the way it would look if that were using the title page layout. But and so, but this topic doesn't belong on the title page, obviously, but that's what it's letting you do. It's letting you pick and choose uh, different things. Okay, so one thing I do want to point out is that none of this is really WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get exactly in the output. Because first of all, for online output, there's different files that come together, um, template pages, which might provide content at the top or the bottom of the page or uh, menus, uh, things like that. And then with print, well, print, if you have a very simple structure, page layout structure, you can get pretty close to WYSIWYG, to what you see is what you get, but uh, you might not. You might be looking at something like, let's go back here, chapters, and this looks fine here because I have a simple setup, but let's say that drop downs here was, uh, maybe I've got a page uh, layout set up where the first page of a chapter, again, this starts lower down, all right? And so this comes up and it's showing me what it's looking like on the first page of a chapter. But in when I generate the output, it might be the first page of a chapter in some PDFs, it might be in the middle of the chapter, it, you just don't know. So you can control it, but only to a certain extent. Where I think it really is helpful is if you are using, again, a very simple structure or something like, let's open up this other project where I've got a product uh, fold out. Let me see if I can get the output. Yeah, there it is. The output comes up. So you can see what this looks like. This is the intention is this is a simple two topic project. And uh, so the idea is this is the output. It's very elongated here horizontally. And the idea is you print this out and then you would fold it. So it like it's shipped with a product. Uh, certain steps are in here in the front and the back. And you can see how this is designed to look, right? This is the front 
topic for this and you're looking at this going, this doesn't look anything like the output. Well, that's right, because you're looking at this in web, la web layout mode and it's really not intended for online output. It's intended for print layout. So I switched to print layout and now I get a much better idea of how this thing actually looks because what it's doing is, is taking the page layout and it's putting it behind this and it's using the, the dimensions and everything. And so you can work with it much better in, in this way. So do I use the print layout mode? Well, not really uh, because I've got more of a complex kind of page layout setup. So actually what I do is um, I'll, I'll, when I'm reviewing PDFs, I'll actually build the output and I'll work on two or three PDFs at the same time, build one and look at it and make corrections while the other one's building and I go back and forth. But if I had a really, really simple structure or I was working on something like a brochure or product fold out, yeah, I, I absolutely would use that stuff. Uh, let's go back to the other project in here just real quick. I wanted to show you. And this particular um, topic right here has got these conditions in it. And so one condition, this is conditioned so that the idea is this shows up in online output and this shows up in the print output, this different color down here. So when you have a situation like this where you're looking at something where it could be one or the other, all right, I'm looking at it's in web layout mode, like, okay, this is the way it looks. And this actually is these two tiles using a responsive layout, these two cells. And if I um, kind of hide that condition, you can see there's cell one, there's cell two, side by side. And then if I go to all the way down to mobile layout, they stack on top of one another. So that's really nice to be able to see exactly how these are set um, depending on the device. But the problem here is I scroll down and there's that print stuff and I don't even wanna see that. Uh, so I could use this feature that I talked about in the other video, the XML editor, and I could say, don't show me the print stuff, exclude that. And so now you get a more realistic idea of what this is look, looking like. And it's the same if I went to the print layout mode, all right. And uh, let's go back to that one. All right, so the two tiles in here, I probably wanna do the opposite in here, change that to not set, online only. I don't wanna see the online only because I'm looking at this in the context of a PDF. So I'm gonna exclude that. And now I don't see that those stacking things. I just see that simple text down below. So that's how you can kind of manipulate the editor to show you what you want, depending on what you have in your head, what, what you're working on, right? All right, so that's layout modes in the XML editor. Look, if those options help you as you're editing, use them. If you're looking at that and going, yeah, I don't know if I don't know if they're going to really help me in my situation, fine. Don't feel don't feel like you have to use them, but they're there in case you want them. All right? That is going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you next time.